Thank you, Pastor Terry, for allowing me to uh, come back and speak with you guys again. The title of my message today is, Who Do You Say I Am? For the last several months, I've been working at the uh, Target, so it's hard for me to return to retail due to having a bad experience back in 2000. Eight. And what happened was, I'll give you guys a little background as to what happened with that. I went to, um, to work at Target from 2006 to 2008, and in, on, on October 31st, 2008, I was working the Halloween shift, and one of the managers, or one of the people that worked there, one of my co-workers worked, worked there, and again, I'm doing basically the same thing I'm doing now with care hearing. And I was helping a guest at the time. And one of my co-workers looked over at me and said, Dorsey, you need to take your mask off. And I kind of, you know, looked over at him and, you know, really didn't say anything to him at the time because I was helping the guest. And... I went, you know, I took my break and went back into the break room. And he comes back into the break room and he says, you know, basically the same thing to me again. And, you know, at that time I, you know, like, you know what, that, you know, it, I went to the eight car people. I told them what happened. They said, you know, you'll get an apology. Never really got an apology. And I gave my two week notice in. And as I, you know, was starting to do the interview process, you know, back in November when I went to Target, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was giving my best performance in the interview process because now you have to do, like, you know, interviews and video interviews and, you know, telling them you know, like what you would do in this type of scenario and whatnot. And I didn't feel like I was giving my best um, at that time. And I didn't feel like I was going to get the job. And then I got, you know, the next step, they said, hey, we want you to come in. And again, it was a, I dropped the ball on, on this end to the, the fact that I read the, email wrong because, you know, back then we still, you know, a year ago, we still COVID and everything. And I read the interview wrong and it said, you know, we are allowing, you know, interviews to be in person. We're not doing interviews over the phone. And I read that, I read it as we are doing interviews on the phone. And then I realized, I read it again. I was like, oh no, I got to go to the store. And finally, I was hired. However, I realized as I started to work then, still realize to this day that there are lost people out there. Whether it's in lost people meaning that they don't know Christ, and whether it's at Target or whether it's in you know hotels where we I stay or where you know, people that I know in my neighborhood or even then, you know, where you work or where you live, there are lost people out there. And at Target where I work, there, there are those that know that I am a pastor, that I go to church, that I have my own podcast, that I travel and speak and share my story. I'm not a perfect person, but I try to be the best light to those in the workplace that I can be, that I can be. And I believe that God has me there for a reason. I hope the smile and attitude I have going into the job, that people will say there is something different about him. There are times in our lives when people will call us 
meek when people will bully us and, and belittle us. I've been called ugly, a freak, a monster, although I've also been called friend, son, brother. On the spiritual side of it, we are called friends of God, children of God, children. In the verse that we will look at today, Jesus asked his disciples a question. Who do people say I am? The answers might have been favorable, but they were all wrong. As Christians, we believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that he is the only way to salvation. When we accept him as Lord and Savior, we will go to heaven for eternity. Those who do not know Christ as God's Son will spend eternity in hell. Though not everyone, though not everyone believes in heaven, not everyone believes in Jesus. And we can see that from the beginning of Christ's ministry here on earth. Jesus had gone into the Jewish territory when the Jewish leaders began to give Jesus problems again and opposing him, prompting him to leave. After this opposition, Jesus crossed the lake and headed north to Caesarea Philippi with his disciples. Caesarea Philippi was a big center for the worship of Baal, the Greek god of Pan, and then of Caesar. While he was there, he asked Peter, Who do you say that I am? Matthew 16, Matthew 16, verse 13 and 16 says, Now when Caesar came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And verse 14, and, and verse 14 says, And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, but still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He, he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ the son of the living God. If you give me a little autistic expression here in this scenario, in this, in this, in this story, we have Jesus who crossed the lake with his disciples. Jesus knows who he is. He knows that he is the son of God. He knows that he is the Messiah. He knows that he is the savior of the world. Yet he wants to know what other people are saying about him. He asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? It doesn't give much description, but what if he went to each of his disciples one by one and asked them, who do people say I am? and yet they were all quiet, they didn't say anything to his response. But Peter is the group's spokesperson. He finally responds with the answer that we just talked about, and says, some say a prophet, some say Elijah, some say John the Baptist, and yet Jesus says, in those six famous words, who do you say I am? And Peter responds, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Because at that moment, those 12 disciples knew who he was. Today, I ask you the same question that Jesus asked his disciples who do you say I am? He's not 
he's one, he, excuse me, here's one interesting thing. Each one of those people that Peter mentioned has already passed on. They have already died. None of those people, including John the Baptist, are alive at that time while they are on the earth. The Pharisees and Sadducees were adamant about not believing that Jesus was the Son of God. Yet according to scripture, they thought that people could come back to life. They, could, they thought that they were able to be reincarnated. Matthew 16, verse 1 says, The, ph the Pharisees and Sadducees asked him to, and so came up and testing Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. For he replied to them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, there will be a storm today, for the sky is red and threatening. Do you know how to discern the spirit, to the spirit, to discern the appearance of the sky, but not discern the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks a sign, and a sign will not be given to it, except the sign of Jonah, and he left them and went away. We can even see the disciples doubted when we went while being around Jesus. And the disciples came to the other side of the sea, but they had forgotten to bring any bread. And Jesus said to them, Watch out and beware of the leaven of the believing of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They began to discuss among themselves, saying, He said that because we did not bring any bread. But Jesus, aware of this, said, You men a little faith. Why do you discuss among yourselves that you have no bread? Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves or the five fishes or the four, over five thousand? How many baskets of how many baskets full you picked up? Or the seven loaves or the four thousand? How many large baskets full you picked up? How is it that you do not yet understand that I do not speak to you concerning bread? But beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they, did not, uh, then they understood that he did not say to beware of the leaven of the bread, but of, of the teaching of the Sadducees and the Ph Pharisees. In the first three verses, he has tried to do his best to warn the disciples against the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He warned them by saying, watch out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but they did not understand what he was saying. They misunderstood what he said and what he thought that he was talking about, about them not bringing any bread. But this was not the case at all. Jesus said to them, you of little faith, why do you doubt? Why do you dis discuss that you did not bring any bread? This is supposed to be a spiritual lesson taught to, taught to them for the disciples, yet they are ple so preoccupied with their physical needs that they fail to understand the lesson. There are several other times when he tells his disciples that they had little faith. In Matthew 6, 30, verse 6, sorry, Matthew chapter 6, verse 30, it says, But if God shall close the grass of the field with his life today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, 
you a little faith. Matthew chapter 8, verse 26 says, He said to them, Why are you afraid, you men, a little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. Matthew chapter 14, verse 31, we see it again. Because immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said to him, You a little faith, why did you doubt? In two of the last verses of the of in two of the last three verses that I first read, we see that the disciples were in a trial and a difficult situation where they didn't know what was going to happen. The disciples didn't realize that the outcome was going to what the outcome was going to be in both situations. They were in, both times they were in a boat. They were on the water. And one and the one Peter the disciple that decided that he was going to go out of the boat and walk on the water. He sees Jesus walking to them while he is on the water, going out into the boat. But yet the disciples don't believe that it is Jesus. They, they think that it is a ghost. So finally, Jesus go, uh, Peter decides that he's going to go out and walk to Jesus. But yet when he steps out into the water, he sees the you know, the current of the water moving. He sees what is happening in that, uh, at that time. And he looks down and sees that he's walking on the water. He gets, becomes afraid. And he begins to sink. He begins to cry out to Jesus, Lord, help me. And Jesus comes over to him and grabs his hand and puts him back into the what into the boat, and then he says those, those words, you, a little faith, why did you doubt? Now here's one thing that I, I realized while I was doing the background study. He sees, you know, Peter... When, he get, when Peter gets out of the boat, he starts to see the wind. How do you see wind? You can feel wind. We can, we can feel, you know, we can see what the wind does to the trees and the plants and, you know, the, the, the rain when it's blowing and it's coming down hard. We can see what the wind is doing to these things. But how do we see wind? Did Peter see wind blowing against the clothes that Jesus was wearing or himself was wearing? Regardless, he, became, he becomes frightened and begins to sink. In the second scenario where Jesus tells his disciples, you a little faith again, they're in a, a boat. A storm comes while they're probably in the middle of the lake. And it's the wind and the rain and the water starts to batter the, the boat. And the, and the water probably starts to come over the side of the, of the boat. And maybe even the, the boat starts to sink a little bit. And the disciples start to get worried and start to get anxious about what's happening. And the disciples run to Jesus, who's asleep at this point on the, in the boat somewhere. And he wakes, they, they wake him up, saying, Jesus, we're, we're drowning, help us. And then Jesus gets up, stands up in the boat, and, you know, calms the wind and calms the storm. And again, says to his disciples, you a little faith, why do you doubt? Thankfully, I've never been out on a boat in a storm. But I've seen both in person and on TV 
what a storm can, can do to water and also to a boat. It can be pretty scary and deadly. When the disciples go to Jesus, we see that he is sleeping. Why or how, I have no idea. I have no idea how Jesus can be sleeping on in the middle of a lake, in the middle of a storm. I'm not sure about you, but I have not spent much time on a boat. I do not think I could ever fall asleep on one of those smaller boats in the middle of a lake. How many times have we been in our own storms and have cried out to God, Lord, save us? Jesus in return tells us you a little faith, why do you doubt? Because when we have faith and we have trust in Jesus, he will help us through the storms. He will help us through the trials and the tribulations of life and what we're going through and what we're dealing with in our lives. In Matthew 6, verse 30, Jesus is talking about a cure for anxiety and how God clothes the grass which is alive today and tomorrow is burned up. He says, how much more will he clothe us? And then repeat those three words, you, a little faith. The term you, a little faith, is not talking about an absence of faith um, as much as it is talking about a deficiency of faith. The Bible in Second Corinthians chapter 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. But what exactly does that mean? In the previous verses in that chapter, Paul talks about the temporal and the eternal. While we are here on earth in an earthly body, in an earthly body wasting away, one day we'll be in eternity with Jesus. So for now, while we are here on earth, we must be pleasing to God. As believers, though the Lord, as believers, though the Lord is present, it is not in the, it is not by sight that we see Him, but it, it is by faith. The only people that have ever seen Jesus alive on this earth were those that saw Him during the time that He was here on earth. Now, if we were to have faith and believe in eternal life, we will say that as long as we have a relationship with Jesus, we will spend eternity with him when we pass away. We can only know this and believe this by faith and not by sight because we have not seen Jesus face, excuse me, face to face. There are many people out there who say they know of God or know a God. We see it through our we see it throughout many religions, where some will say that there is only one God. Some will even say there are different gods or one God with different manifest, manifestations. Each major religion, such as Islam. Buddhist, Hindu, Jewish, Christians, Jewish, Christian, will each say similar things and vary on others. As we know in Christianity, we believe that Jesus is the son of the living God. We also use, we also use the term Trinity to describe who Jesus is, meaning that Jesus is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one being. Yet in the Jewish religion, Jewish religion, they believe in the same God, yet they do not think that the Messiah has come yet. Though I'm sure, just that we would 
If we ask people other religions, is their God the true God? Many will say yes, that they believe that their God, that their God is the true God. If we ask them that if they would, where they would go when they die, some may say paradise, some may say heaven. Some religions even believe in reincarnation. Many people will even say all rogues or religion will eventually lead us, lead them to heaven. Though in John chapter 14, verse 5 to 7, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do not know him or have seen him. As I get rid of the end here, one of my last questions is, do you truly know who Jesus is today? As a follower of Christ, if someone would ask you the same question that Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? Or maybe they would ask you, who do you say that Jesus is? What would your response be? How would you respond to that question? They may say, well, you believe in Jesus. You say that he is the son of God. How, do, how would you respond to that question? If a person asks you, it will probably be something like this. Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah. And I'll end with this last question. Who do you say that Jesus is?